Dear viewers, wherever you are, hello and welcome to this new episode of your program, Out of the Box. Theism, or the belief in a god. Atheism, disbelief in a god. Gnostic, knowing. Agnostic, not knowing. Deism, are all different ends of the spectrum, or spectra, if you like, of the belief system. Some people today are referring to spirituality, or New Age spirituality, as a middle ground between the different extremes. So spirituality is considered today to be the moderate version of all different ends of the spectrum. Or is it? To understand more and to shed more light, I'm really delighted to be accompanied by Hossein Bazar, who is a life coach, and I'm really delighted to have her with us today in the program. Hossein, hello and welcome to the program. Hello, Muhammad. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. And uh, just before we delve deeper into the crypts of spirituality, let's stop with our dear viewers with a short report about the basics of spirituality, and then we'll resume our discussion. New Age Spirituality, Beliefs and Practices. Belief in the power of naturopathy and spiritual energy. The belief that nature is sacred Belief in the idea that individuals have a deeper inner potential that can be realized with the help of various psychotherapeutic interventions. Belief in psychic abilities, clairvoyance, and the psychological power of some individuals. A belief that destiny can be revealed through practices such as tarot or astrology, the belief in past lives, extraterrestrial beings, and cosmic religions, focus on self-improvement, going beyond the social self and trying to connect with the true self or inner self through practices such as meditation. The self is seen as the ultimate authority in the New Age movement. Instead of accepting the reality of an outside god, one needs to find the god or goddess within and find their way to wholeness. New Age movement believers do not turn to a traditional religion and instead, they take what suits each person from each religion. They think that taking what suits you from any belief and philosophy is the best way to form your own path to perfection. New Age movement believers reject the idea that one religion had a monopoly on the truth. Dear viewers, after watching this short report, uh, we resume our discussion with Hossein. So Hossein, like to start off, how do you define spirituality? Do you see eye to eye with what was said in the report? Do you agree to everything that was said in the report about spirituality? Um, in actuality, um, the way I perceive uh, spirituality has a, a, a different perspective than most people would agree on. Um, especially when it comes to uh, towards uh, religion and spirituality. Uh, but for me, spirituality is a term that has been used by so many to define a person that's connected to some spirit realm. So uh, in, in that matter, that can take us in many different aspects and um, views on uh, this subject. 
But mostly I can agree on some of the stuff that have been, uh, uh, that I've, that we've seen right now. Um, but when it comes to uh, religion views, I kind of have uh, a different view on that. Okay. So you have some mm-hmm. reservations maybe <laughs> regarding uh, these? I, I don't see the separation of uh, between religion and spirituality. Okay, perfect. So actually, you've mm-hmm. already taken us to this next question, which is, does spirituality go hand in hand with religion or does it contradict religion? It can. It can go hand in hand and it can mm-hmm. contradict religion. So uh, how? Can you give us an example of both sides, please. Sure. Um, uh, let's define spirituality to start with. Um, uh, spirituality is a term that's, uh, that's used to uh, give a definition for a human being that has another aspect than the material aspect. So basically, uh, as humans, we are um, a container of uh, material realms and spiritual realms. And spirit, as in the word, may refer to the soul or refer to what's unseen, untouched, but also recognized by awareness. So it would take us to the metaphysical realm. So it's something that's beyond everything that's tangible or materialistic. Definitely. Yeah, okay. And... um. So can I be spiritual regardless of my religion or regardless of if I believe in a religion or not? You are already spiritual. We are all spiritual beings. So okay. we, since we, we carry the material uh, body and the non-material body, mm-hmm. the material body basically is the vehicle for the spirit realm. So it is not yes. something that you acquire or something that you gain. It, it's it's something that's naturally hardwired within you as a human being. Definitely. You are definitely always spiritual. Spirit is part of you. Mm-hmm. Now, um, how can I earn my spirituality, if the term may apply? How can I really earn it? Because that's it is, perfect. but mm-hmm. how can I connect? That's uh, a perfect question. And uh, that's what we call spiritually awakened. Mm -hmm. Um, Most of us live our lives without knowing that we actually carry another side. Okay. Somehow you recognize it throughout your lives. Like, let's go back to our childhood. In your childhood, I'm sure you had a recognition of something else, maybe watching you or sensing uh, beings around you. With time and education and and culture, we lose that because mm-hmm. people d- deny everything that's not seen. Okay. So basically, when we grow older, we lose the uh, feeling of sensation of the probability of having another uh, realm connected to us. Mm-hmm. So you say that when we're little children, we have this insight or clairvoyance, maybe, or like, you know, we have this um, psychic part of us there, or our third eye. But as we grow up, the more we grow up, uh, the more we lose this sense. This comes with bringing up or with nurture, really, that might. Um, tame or pacify our nature, our spiritual nature. Did I get you I right? Have, yes, and I'll, I will have to add on to something that's uh, been uh, used so much, a term that most people in uh, uh, in spirituality have been using, which is the light body and the dense body. So the more information we carry, uh, lower information, and when I say lower, 
it means uh, lower frequencies, lower vibrations, lower emotions, and lower thoughts, the denser the body becomes. The lesser information from the lower realms or frequencies, the lighter the body. That's what we call a light body, basically. A light body is more connected to another realm than a dense body. When you grow older, you become uh, or you carry more information, uh, negative information, let's say, that makes this body denser, which is harder to connect to other realms. Okay, so um, is this, again, connected to the Platonic view of, of the world? So, like, since the time of Plato, he was talking about like four different levels of consciousness that we have. And um, there is the, you know, like the world of, of perfection, the world of sources, and which would have things like a world of absolutes. So you'd have the absolute justice, absolute beauty, absolute goodness, and so on. And, um, but we sort of um, downgrade ourselves uh, when we stick to the materialistic world, while uh, we would exalt ourselves, the more we reach the spiritual world. And um, when you're talking here again, um, you know, it's inevitable for me to think about Far Eastern philosophies and beliefs, like Buddhism, again, Taoism, Confucianism, um, Shintoism, and to think about things like the yin and the yang and all these different things. Um, like, is spirituality more connected to these faith or these beliefs more than other beliefs? Like, um, is it easier for somebody to comprehend spirituality the way you're talking about if they belong to these far um, Eastern faith, or like um, if they belong to um, some uh, specific um, sects of Christianity or Islam, like, you know, Sufism in Islam, or like uh, Puritans maybe in Christianity and, and so on and so forth. Um, or is it open to everyone equally? Um, I think the interpretations of, uh, let's specify Islam, had gone uh, farther from um, the realms outside of the material. But every person can take any uh, definition of anything and use it into the material world. But definitely a Buddhist, for instance, could comprehend this much in a much higher perspective or a better perspective than, uh, let's say, Judaism or Christianity or Islam. Since uh, the religions, from as far as I know, or the Buddha Buddhists, they believe in a spirit more than communicating this issue with a Muslim or a, a Christian or a, a, a Jew. The Abrahamic so, religions in general. The Abrahamic religions. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's talked about more. It's practiced more. Mm. Uh, their daily lives. Uh, but when it comes to, let's say, prayers, prayers have been used in the Abrahamic religions a way of connecting without knowing you're connecting <laughs> okay somehow okay. okay but in let's say the practices that are done in in eastern um, religions they are knowing of having a spirit somehow some way so how do you see prayer versus meditation you know, like uh, usually the ultimate goal goal of, of, you know, meditation or religion is, is sort of becoming at one with 
with the greater spirit or with the spirit of nature or the spirit of the world or the universe, you know, according to different perspectives. But um, isn't prayer a form of meditation or do you see it as a different thing? Uh, meditation, meditations have different aspects. So in, in different ways and tools that are used in meditations. Prayers usually is a one way done by the religions. So when it comes to connecting to the Lord or the universe or Allah or God, a prayer usually is supposed to be the tool to connect with the Lord. But if the awareness within is not aware of the other realms and have a disconnect or a disconnection to it, whether you prayed or you meditated, there will be very little connection or sometimes impossible. The awareness happens once we realize and recognize the form we're in, which is the different bodies that we're supposed to be carrying the material body, and the spiritual body. But when we separate ourselves from that idea itself and not believe in it or consider it as a mythology or whatever, it will be difficult for you to connect, whether you meditate or you pray. So we talked before about like the philosophical part of it, like the world of, of forms, like the world the the world of forms or of ideals, according to Plato. But um, if we look at it from a psychological perspective, again, the basics of, you know, the id, the ego and the superego. So the id being, being like basic, the, the basic or maybe the reptilian brain of, of us or like sort of the, the limbic brain of ourselves. And then, uh, then the superego would be you know, like the world again of ethics and and morals and and all these beautiful things. Um, is spirituality sort of interchangeable with the super ego, or is it entirely different? It, it could definitely it could, um, because in every state that a human being lives in will have to abide by, let's say, certain rules or ways to actually uh, gain a, uh, uh, a, st a status, a status. So in, in psychology, I believe, um, the whole point and purpose was to um, raise the awareness into a higher awareness. And spirituality also falls into that category as well. But when it comes to psychology, psychology believes more in um, what we call, whether they they call they call it a, um, a higher self or a super self. Psychology believes in more of practices than spirituals. Spirituals believe it's an inner awakening that happens within without having to abide with human ethics and values. So if we, if we want to sort of summarize this point here, just to put it in a nutshell, if possible, um, do you see that spirituality is, is something that complements supplements or replaces religion so um how do you see that the way uh, religion has has been applied the last few years um i believe spirituality might um separate from religion Okay, so it might replace religion. It might be a different choice altogether. 
Yes, it might. Okay, so um, so this is faith or religion. How about Gnosticism, like or, or, or agnosticism, maybe more than Gnosticism. So if I'm agnostic, would spirituality be my best choice? If I'm sort of borderline between theism and atheism, and between, you know, um, you know, like different religions, I'm, I'm not sure really if there's a super being, a first cause, a god or not. And again, I'm not sure if these revelations are true or not. Would spirituality be my goal here? Would that would that it it could help definitely since uh, since the whole idea of it is to raise yourself from a state of being in a state of fight with the world mm -hmm. into living in a more peaceful world and life. So basically, when when you are in the middle, probably this is the best choice <laughs> to actually just practice it, see it. Does it work? Does it work? Let's look into ourselves or within and see what are the things that I need to work on and, and upgrade. Um, it, it works whether you believe it or not. So most of the stuff I do in my sessions, you know, people don't believe in most of the stuff we talk about, okay. but they know that they're going into a better a mental state. Definitely. So spirituality does not necessarily contradict the idea of God and does not necessarily assert the idea of a God. So it it you can live with both in spirituality. You can live with both. You can live with okay. both. I believe that. How At about least as far as I know. <laughs> okay. Perfect. How about strict atheism, materialism? Like, can I become an atheist and a spiritual person at the same time? A denying of the unseen um, would be would make it difficult. Mm -hmm. But, but, but okay. there are but there are laws in this universe mm -hmm. so and and once you follow these la laws whether you knew it or not you are on the right track whether you believed in a god or not you are on the right track let's say for instance um you have a heightened awareness about yourself towards work and you know that most of the stuff you work on actually manifest easily then i could say that the scale of of awareness within you is higher in that aspect but maybe in relationships you don't get what you want or you hardly get what you want, I would say you have a lower level of awareness from that aspect. That would make you a combination of an aware person and an unaware person at the same time. <laughs> okay, I get you. So it, it really varies from which perspective and which point are we tackling the issue here from. Um, now we come to the last but never least point, and this is, I think, the trillion dollar question in, in the world today. With all the troubles and atrocities humanity has been witnessing since the beginning of time, really, until today, um, many people have asserted that religion is part and parcel or faith or belief is part and parcel of most of the miseries that humanity has lived in. Uh, whether it's religion A fighting religion B or an atheist fighting a, a religious person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, is spirituality what we're looking for today? Is spirituality the antidote to all of these 
horrors and atrocities committed by humans since the dawn of time? Okay, uh, I love this question. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to go on a different route in this question because this is really interesting. Anything, whether it was religion, spirituality, or any tool we have, is a way to create a life that's not so materialistic where you can get through that the hardship in life by using this heightened awareness that you carry within you. But everything could carry uh, uh, both sides. So let's say, for instance, a spiritual person could actually grow an ego where can benefit from their spirituality and harm others. And at the same time, a spiritual person can actually use it into creating a better life and for themselves and others. So could again, it be the, could it be the way out of all the atrocities? Yes. Um, it all depends on on human beings. Honestly, it all depends on you. You can take it from one route or another. So is there something like a uniform spirituality or is there a unique case for every person? A unique case for every person. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, if even if everyone is spiritual, they, they don't necessarily see eye to eye, right? See, when you look at things from a higher perspective, you would understand that life as is is only a play where people are playing roles. Mm. So whether you're playing the victim role or the villain's role, you're actually playing a role. Okay. At the end of the day, we are here to learn from these roles and ascend to a better role. Mm -hmm. But so most people cannot ascend from a role, so they finish this lifetime where they end up having to come back into continuing the lesson. Okay, so are we here dealing with karma, samsara, you know, nirvana? Are we here talking about these things again? Like, are you know, like Far Eastern, you know, different life cycles, reincarnation, again, different avatars. So we might, you know, like if I'm doing bad deeds, in my next life, I must, I might be a lower being. And then until eventually I reach the nirvana, unite with the one. Are we talking about this now? Uh, somehow, yes. Um, there's a thing that I've been looking into even deeper recently. Um, I cannot guarantee it because I haven't seen it. So I would have to die to actually come back and tell you. <laughs> But from what I understand with my questioning about how could this be fair, like a child would be born with a, some kind of disease, how could this be even fair? The most logical for my mind to actually understand was for me to maybe take this mythology and put it put it down and start studying probably this could be the reason, which is paying karma or paying debt. This is a way to actually soothe ourselves into understanding the factuals or the atrocities that we're seeing that we have no control of. How true is it will be determined once, as I said, we leave this life and we actually see it. But it's much easier for a person to understand this, this theory rather than trying to uh, fight things that cannot be changed. So you could, you could say we can use it as a tool for now to understand things. Maybe, hopefully, we will find the realization that we're looking for or the answers that we're looking for. I cannot deny any um, uh, uh, sayings in any religion because I believe they all uh, 
they all go back to the same well, you know. So you can, we cannot deny any of that. But we can use these things while having a very uh, transformative way of thinking into accepting everything new that we could understand and comprehend and maybe we can actually catch it one day. So um, do you believe in things like past life hypnosis? Because some people would say that you don't really go to a past life. It's it's your it's your you know subconscious that's tricking you. It's it's you, you didn't really like you know when you're under hypnosis and you see yourself in in ancient Rome or like you know whatever. It's not really you. Or do you believe it is really you? Do you believe that each one of us had several past lives and maybe several future lives are yet to come? Um, going into hypnosis and seeing a past life, I honestly have never done that. And I don't use these tools. Since I have, <laughs> I have a say where I always tell people, do not confuse yourself more. We've, we are already complicated enough. We have enough information for this lifetime to take care of. We don't want to confuse ourselves in the way. And for me, I've never looked into that because I consider myself, I'm still in the way into growing even more and understanding more about this lifetime since the subconscious mind carries so much information that it would become a, a, a too heavy for a person to actually still go back to another lifetime and and, and find themselves being the villain in the other lifetime and carrying guilt and shame and carrying more stuff within than we already have. So for me, I cannot talk about it since I don't practice it. You know, some of our viewers now might say, actually, although you're saying that it does not necessarily contradict religion, but actually um, you are you know, really destroying some of the foundations of religion, which is things like, you know, eternal ecstasy or eternal agony, like, you know, heaven and hell. You're saying that, no, there's nothing like that. So what would you say to them? Like, they're saying that, you're saying that you can be religious and spiritual, but no, they would say, actually, that's not true. When I look into religion, because I'm, I'm I come, I'm, I'm a Muslim, so my family, my, are Muslims. But the deeper I go into religion, the more sense it's making to me. So, hell and heaven are only a perspective. The interpretation of people, since people rely so much on the seen and they touched, they have made it become so material in a way, and I'm at least speaking about Islam right now, they've made it so much um, explainable to the mind for them to understand where it became too materialistic that they have forgotten the actual meanings of hell and heaven. Since we live on this earth, then we are going to see dark nights and lighter nights or lighter days or days or whatever. This falls onto everything. It falls in religion, it falls in spirituality, and it falls in our days and nights. There's two aspects of everything, two sides of everything. Does spirituality trigger religious people? It does, big time. Is it a way of denying everything they've known? Human beings have always done that. Mm -hmm. So it will be a struggle for them to understand unless they have the um, intention 
to understand it. So you're saying when religious scripture talks about hell or heaven, it's more metaphoric. It's not. It's not. It's not to be taken verbatim, literally. You shouldn't take it really word for word. It's just metaphoric. It's a form of a parable, really. It's not a real thing out there. So because in our day-to-day -day life, we might suffer uh, incredible psychological agony that might um, make all other physical pain subside, really. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so definitely spirit is even higher than, you know, like her intellect. And, and so suffering spiritually can be the biggest agony. You don't have to be burnt literally by fire and mm -hmm. you don't have to be surrounded by materialistic pleasures to really enjoy so yeah yeah i get what you're saying he's saying exactly. here exactly okay. um Hassan bazar really thank you very much for being with with us today it was very informative and very enlightening and um i hope our viewers would benefit equally from this uh, episode because I've personally have. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. And dear viewers, if we were to, to recap here, it's um, humans always claim, and since the dawn of, you know, history and since the inception of humanity, they've always claimed to be the superior being, the higher beings, the better being. But did they really earn that? I don't think so. You know, like, um, usually scientists say that if the planet Earth is 100 years old, then humans came on the last second. Because our age, compared to the, the age of, of, the, of planet Earth, and or, or even the universe, which is by far much older, is nothing, really, to the last second. But no other being has created this amount of destruction to the ecosystem, to the environment, to the nature, to the natural balance on this planet more than humans. And, um, you know, like, like someone like the Mahatma Mohandas Gandhi said, like, you know, there's enough for everyone's need, but not for everyone's greed. And um, and greed always comes from the materialistic part. Because, um, you know, you can never exhaust, you can never, you know, consume spirituality. You can never consume it. Like, there's always enough spirituality for you, for me, for everyone. But there's not always enough materialistic supplies for you and for me. So I think I think this is the next step, really, that we need to take. This is the real Renaissance. You know, this is the real modern age. Um, this is the real human maturity that I hope we will reach all one day. Dear viewers, until we meet again. Have a very pleasant time. Thanks for watching.